what it talents, what it talents, what it do. Glory to God. Well, I'm excited because 2024 is the year of fixed purpose. And this morning, I want to talk to you about purpose. You've been purpose for God's creation. You and the heart of God has created you for his purpose. And you are blessed to be in the Victory family, to spend a year journey on us discovering God's purpose for your life. Do you know how many of the body of Christ are ignorant of why they've been created by God and what their purpose is? More or less talking about the world struggling to figure out what their purpose in the earth is. But we're taking a journey in 2024 to help you to discover why you were created. You were created for God's purpose. And what is that purpose for you? We want to bring it so that you're going to get a general purpose as we go through the year. But it's from that general purpose. We're, going to, we're believing God to speak to you your significant role and in individual purpose. You see, Pastor and I remember in 1993 as our hearts began to hunger and turn towards God at a whole new level 31 years ago. Been saved since 2004. Him, I'm sorry, 1993. Um, for, for, no, I take that back. We've been saved since Pastor Tyrone, 1983, myself, 1984. But it took 1993 to awaken a hunger, and a desire at a whole nother level. 31 years ago, I remember God just pulling our hearts in deeper, listening to Benny Hinn and his ministry and going to Benny Hinn Conference to be in the presence and the glory of God, understanding that God wants an intimate relationship with us and we could have one with the Holy Spirit and learning from Benny Hinn's ministry that is God has no respect of person on how close you can come. It's about your hunger. It's about your desire. It's about your expectation and yearning. You can come and be used by God as much as you will allow him to use. That purpose is not just for the five-fold ministry gifts, amen, but they're for all of his creation, amen. And so we can remember as we drew closer, turning on Morris Sorello and hearing Morris Sorello talk about God was causing him to raise up an end time army of God. And we cried out. We didn't know what that looked like, but we wanted to be a part of that end time army. And God said, just continue to seek my face and require my presence in his word. And as we prayed out and seek God's face and got deeper in the word of God and, and just heard messages, preaching ministry messages, God began to reveal what our purpose was in the earth. And we heard God reveal that my husband was called to be a pastor. And that was profound because he wanted to be a security business owner. He also wanted to finance the gospel. He had a heart for God, and he wanted to be so rich that he could take his revenue and finance the gospel. That if his pastor had need, he'd say, don't worry about it, because I got more than enough to meet that need so you can go out and do the will of God. That was in his heart. We didn't come from a family of bishops and pastors and deacons, <laughs> glory to God. So that was alarming to hear that the call of God was pastoring. Then we begin to hear as we prayed out it some more and God intercesses to pray about it. God says, I've not only called you to pastor, I've called your wife alongside you and I've called this entire family to ministry. This is not a mama daddy thing, but I have anointed and graced your family to the call of God to ministry. At that time, my daughter was six. Um, well, no, were you about six years old? 
old and Joe was about one years old and God was talking about we were called as a family to ministry. I'm telling you, when you find out your purpose, it, it dictates how you live. It gets rid of the distractions and simplifies your life because you start living intentionally. You start guarding in, in your heart and you start guarding what distractions or activities you'll pick up that might cost you too much and move you from the purpose of God. It is so fulfilling to know why you were created for God. Amen. And so we want you to have that same experience because that is not just something that Pastor Tyrone and Cynthia and the Marshall family have been privy to. But I'm going to tell you, knowing that, that you've been purposed by God, it keeps you focused on God and it keeps life's distractions away from us. In Proverbs 4.25, in the Passion Translation, our foundational scripture, it says, set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose. In other words, keep your eyes on the fixed purpose of God for your life. Looking straight ahead, ignoring life's distraction. When you understand that you've been purposed by God, when you find out your purpose in life, praise God, it already keeps you on the path and it keeps you off of a lot of things that can distract you. I'm telling you, it simplified your life. It helped us to discover what school that my children would go up, would, would go to as we were raising them. It just made it so much easier for us. It helped us to be able to decide what TV programs we would not watch and we would watch, what movies we would watch and what we would not watch, what extra entertainment and things we would engage in and what we would not engage in. It helped us to learn how to treat one another, how to honor one another, how to walk in love, how to treat other people. It made an urgency in our heart to burn with priority the word of God in seeking God's face. So when you know your purpose, it'll help you keep your eyes fixed on God's purpose in your life, and it will concentrate your efforts and energy on what's important. You'll become effective because you will count the cost of taking on something new. I can tell you that during that time and during that season, when I came off my job and God gave me a season of being home just to seek his face and to be a mother and to train up the next generation of warriors for him, my own children, amen, to raise him a godly seed. People thought I was at home to run them errands. I'm telling you, when you know your purpose, when you know your assignment, boldness comes up on you to tell people, I ain't here to be your errand girl. So look, I'm here to be about my father's business and I ain't available to run you from place to place. I ain't available to talk to you all day long. I got purpose. See, I was a person that never wanted to hurt nobody's feeling but when you know what God purposed you to do it becomes easy to say no you are not distracting me from my purpose please forgive me amen so like I said you become effective because you'll count the cost of taking on something new which will eliminate distractions and simplify your life some of y'all got too much stuff going on in your life and you feel it's so busy because you don't know your purpose. So you running from thing to thing and doing so many things because without a clear purpose, you'll keep changing directions. You'll change jobs all the time. You'll change relationships. You'll jump from church to church and all other types of external things. You'll keep changing, looking for answers, looking for peace, hoping that each change will settle the uncertainty and the confusion in your mind or fulfill the emptiness, the void in your heart. See, when you know why God created you and you know purpose, you will have fulfillment. <sighs> Thinking that each time something would be different, but the problem is never solved. Amen. So... Knowing your purpose, as I said, brings fulfillment in life, and it prepares you for eternity. See, we got to realize you are created for eternity. Your time here on earth is just a brief moment, but we will live forever. 
And based on where you live is where who you made your reservations with why you were here on earth. If it was with Jesus and you received him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, then your eternity would be with him. But if by default you just didn't make a reservation, then your eternity will be with the devil in hell. And so you got to realize, you got to stop looking at life for what I can do in these little short years that I'm living here when you got an eternal life. How you live your life and fulfill God's purpose will determine what your eternal life looks like. Now, I'm not talking about whether you get into heaven or not, but there are different rewards when you get into heaven. You know, I want to get there, and the Father says, well done, my good and faithful service. Not well. I don't want my time to be wasted. Amen. And so you got to know we've been created for God's purpose. Therefore, discovering God's purpose starts with God. It doesn't start with what do I do well. It doesn't start with what are my gifts and talents. It doesn't start with what people have prophesied over me or what, what people my mom and daddy said that I can be or what others see in me. It doesn't start with that. It starts with your personal relationship with God and you knowing yourself what God has said. You try to run after a prophecy and it's a prophet lie. That's why people have backslid on God now. Because they're dependent on their life on a prophecy that was a prophet lie, the good intention of the person that spoke that word of wisdom over them, but they missed it. And the person did not seek God themselves to inquire if that was so, but tried to fulfill the word that came out of someone else's mouth. And it was never the plan of God. And the attack that comes against you to knock you off of loving God and staying connected is harsh. And you don't see flourishing from trying to fulfill what someone else prophesied over you causes discouragement, disillusionment, depression, and it could cause you to quit on God. Now, prophecy is a gift of God. But you need to make sure a prophecy bears witness when someone speaks that over your life. God should have already been talking to you about those things. And if he hasn't been talking to you about those things, then just sit it on the shelf. Don't say they got to be lying. Just sit it on the shelf and say, God, I'm just going to continue seeking your face and praying out and seeing what you're saying to me. And maybe one day it may bear witness. But if it doesn't, trash it. You have to have your personal relationship. Your personal relationship with God should confirm a word of knowledge, a word of prophecy, a word of wisdom that someone speaks over your life. Amen? And so learn from having your own relationship with God. And as I said, therefore, discovering God's purpose starts with God. So come with me to Colossians 1, and I'm going to look at verse 16 in the message. And it says, for everything... Absolutely everything above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. Where do we find our purpose? In God. Amen. Your life is not about you. You have a purpose that God has for your life that is greater than your happiness your goals, and your desires. Now, God, when you spend time in the Word, God takes His desires and He makes them your desires. You remember I told you my husband believed before um, seeking God for himself and, and, and realizing his true purpose, he thought that he was going to be a business owner and own his own security firm and that he would be a person that would finance the gospel. That was a desire of his a deep desire of his. But when he began to get in this word and he began to seek God's face at another level and require God's presence as his vital necessity of life, God's 
desire for him begin to drop in his heart and he begin to desire to go in ministry. He begin to receive the desire to be a pastor. It bear witness. It changed his desire to God's desire. So that's why we don't determine our purpose by what makes us happy, what goals we have, and our earthly natural desires if they're not founded from you seeking God in his word on an extended period of time. Even if you find ways to achieve your goals, that's still not discovering your purpose. You didn't create yourself. So you can't discover your purpose by depending only on self. The creator knows what his creation was created for. We understand when we buy a vehicle, we understand that if we buy a Ford, the creator of Ford gives us an owner's manual to show us how to operate that new vehicle because they know its ability, its maximum speed, what type of fuel it should be fueled with, how often it needs checkups. It knows what it was created for. How much more God being our creator knows the purpose and plan of why he created each and every one of us. See, if you depend on yourself, self will have you spending your life trying to create a lasting legacy on the earth. Yeah. You know, it's in all of us. We want to be remembered when we're gone. And there's nothing wrong with being remembered, but you just don't want that to all you have to your life is the people remember you, remember you, and God is going, well, <laughs> what happened? What people fail to realize is that all achievements are eventually, will eventually be surpassed. Records are broken, reputations fade, and tributes are forgotten. As I was studying, I read a clip from James Dobson when he said he was in high school. His greatest dream was to win the tennis championship, and he achieved that dream. And he was so proud when he, they took his championship trophy for the school and, that he had earned and put it in the showcase. How proud he was. What a proud day that was. Then years later, someone mailed him his trophy, putting in a note saying that they They got it out of the trash can. It was put in the trash when they remodeled the school building, that high school building. Come on now. Uh, Your fame in the earth will soon pass away. It is not eternal. Amen. What you want to have is an eternal fame with God. You want to do on earth what you're known for in heaven, what God purposed for you, amen? So we weren't put on earth to be remembered. We were put here to fulfill God's will in the earth in order to prepare you for eternity. What ultimately matters most will not be what others say about your life, but what God says about your life. What is God saying about your life right now? You're in this fast, why not inquire? God, what are you saying about my life? What have you purposed for me? What is your will for me? Because one day, as I said, we'll stand before God and he will do an audit of our life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 14 in verses 10 and 12, each of us will stand personally before the judgment seat of God and each of us will have to give a personal account to God. The first account that would be asked is, what what did you do with Jesus while you were here on earth? Did you receive him as your Lord and Savior while you were here on earth? Based on your answer, that will determine where your eternity will be spent. The next thing God will ask you is, what did you do with what God gave you? What did you do with your life? All the gifts, all the talents, all the opportunities, the energy, the relationships and resources that God gave each and one of us. Did we spend them only on ourselves or did we use them for the purpose God made us to use them for? Yes, you have gifts and talents, but we need to be inquiring of God. God, how do my gifts and talent play into the purpose you have for me? Not us going, well, I'm talented, I'm a great musician, I'm a great 
um, speaker. I'm a great artist. I'm a great this and that. So I'm just going out here and do this thing and then expect God to bless it. No, those gifts and talents were given to you to be used, but you want to make sure you're using them according to how God purposed for you to use them and the purpose and description of your life. Amen? So if you had to answer the question right now before God and you ask him in your time of prayer and fasting, God, am I using the gifts and talents and things that you've given me for your purpose? And if not, God, show me how you want to use them for your purpose. See, you know, I'm even reminded that, you know, when we talk about God giving you his desires, you know, I told you our family is called as a ministry. Well, my daughter was more in alignment with that call than my son was. And all that I knew to do was just to Say, well, you know, son, you do what God, you feel God is leading you, but I'm going to tell you something. God said this family is called to ministry. And I'll just intercede from that place. If you feel that you're supposed to be in the arts, great. God uses people in the arts. That's ministry. If you feel comedy is part of how God's going to use you, well, not the one you're currently doing or have been doing. I know that ain't God. I pull out the scriptures about filthy language coming out your mouth. But there is clean comedy. And if God turns your heart for you to do clean family comedy, then that might be how God wants to use you in ministry. But one thing my son was assured of, he wasn't called to be no preacher. He wasn't called to be no minister. And he wasn't called to be no pastor. He had a heart for winning people to the Lord that would not come into the house of God because they would not come to a church service, but they come see a play. So that, that's a form of ministry that God was using him. But somehow in 2023, his relationship took another level, seeking God's face. And inquiring of God's presence. And guess what? God began to illuminate in his heart that he's called for ministry and called to be a minister of the gospel. Isn't that amazing? Now, his parents understand there's a call and then there's a season of preparation and then there's a separation unto the call. So we don't take novice and quickly attain them because they would be devoured without being cultivated in growth. But just look what God does when you spend time with him. So he may still in his vein continue. His ministry doesn't have to look like our ministry. His ministry may just continue to be doing comedy, but this time it's going to be clean comedy. His ministry may still be doing the arts and the drama play. That's still ministry. But he's accepting the fact that God has called him to be a minister of the gospel. But that comes from seeking God in his word, setting aside distraction and saying, God, I want to know you more better. He wasn't looking to find out if he was a minister. He ran into it and so had to submit to it finally. And y'all pray for him because you know the enemy would try to come just with all of us and discourage you and pull you from that. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So I love it. Look at this in Proverbs 11 as my time winds down. Are y'all getting something? Yeah. Proverbs 11, 28 in the message. A life devoted to things is a dead life. A stump. A God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. A God-shaped life flourishes. You know, if your life is feeling dead, lifeless, feels like it's reached a dead end, feels empty, then you need to discover God's purpose for your life and let him fulfill his purpose through you to cause your life to flourish. It's time to seek God first and stop seeking things. Stop seeking goals and opportunities and ask God, I just want to seek your face and I'm trusting you. You'll tell me what to do with those gifts, those opportunities, those talents. Stop making your own way and then you have to sustain it. 
You know, Abraham heard the call that he was going to have a baby, but he offered some self-help with the assistance and the advice of Sarah, and he ended up having an Ishmael. And because of that self-help, today we are now still experiencing the, the, the argument and the controversy between our, his son Isaac and Ishmael, and that's the problem over here in the Middle East now. All these years later, what self-help things have you done that you're trying to manage and maintain, but it's causing you pain and discouragement? Come on, let's take it to God because he's, he forgives and he can make the crooked places straight. He can take what your mistake was and he can begin to correct it and make it well. Amen for his glory. Now, I hope that in all of this, I have inspired you that as you go on your fast, to fast and discover God's purpose for your life. I hope that you will have another urgency in this time with God and in 2024 that God, I, I got to seek your face. I got to require your presence. I got to require it as my vital necessity of life. I need you, God. I need to discover why I was created. What is my purpose in the earth? And as God reveals your purpose, I want to give you one word of wisdom that God gave us. Don't allow the enemy to suddenly come in by you seeking to fulfill the purpose once it's revealed instead of you seeking God to fulfill the purpose through you. Oh, it's a subtle difference. See, if you seek fulfilling the purpose, then the purpose will eventually become your God. And you'll lose sight of the one who gave you your purpose. But if you seek God and recognize he fulfills purpose through you, so you seek him and inquire of him, God, how do you want to fulfill this purpose since it's what I've been created for you to be? It keeps you God-minded and God-focused and in his presence. When we discovered our purpose to be pastor, and we said, my God, we don't know how to pastor, Lord. What do you want us to do? God said, seek me, follow me. It's harvest time. Seek my presence. Get in my word. Stay with me. Listen to ministry teachings that I instruct you to listen to. Listen to the CD. Stay buried in my word. I will guide you. Don't seek the pastoral ship. Seek me, and I will bring you into pastoralship. Have we sought how to be a pastor? The enemy would have moved my husband out of his timing for the birthing of being set apart to be a pastor. See, your purpose in the earth is like a woman giving, carrying a child. There is conception when she knows she's pregnant. And then there's development season along the way before the child, the manifestation of the promise, comes into her natural world. But if she were to birth that child at three months, it would be killed. If she birthed it at five or six months, it might survive, but there'd be such a struggle, such an unnecessary hardship. But if it comes to full nine months to the term, it gives mom and dad great joy that they're not worried whether the lungs have been developed, whether the brain is whole, whether it needs to be on life support. Do you see the difference? Well, so is your purpose. The enemy will try to move you out of God's timing to birth God's purpose before it is ready. Because we sought God for the fulfillment of how he was going to fulfill his purpose through it and not purpose when three men of God who pastors churches at three separate times came to my husband and said, I see the anointing on your life. We want to set you up in a church. We want to make a place for you to pastor. Come be with us. But because we were seeking the face of God, God said, that's not it. Keep seeking my faith. Keep requiring my presence and stay put where you are. That happened three times. You see, the devil comes to create a duplicate will and hopes to pull you into a duplicate will. 
See, that looked like the will of God to pastor, and it looked like that's what God called us to do. And if we'd been seeking to pastor, we would have stepped out of the will of God. We would have birthed what God had purposed in us ahead of time. And I'm going to tell you what, we would have never encountered any of you on the other side. We might not even be in ministry. So be careful of that. The enemy wants to duplicate God's purpose in your life and make it seem like it's bright and shiny. But you need to seek God and require of him and see if the timing is here. Do not seek the purpose once it's revealed. You're seeking God in prayer to inquire, to find out why you've been created. Once it's revealed, I caution you. Don't seek trying to make the purpose happen. Seek God for how he wants to fulfill his purpose through you. Why do I say that? Because in Ephesians 1.18, there's a prayer that said that we would know the hope of Jesus' calling. Jesus has a ministry calling in us in the earth. You know, the four gospel was Jesus' ministry on the earth while he was alive. But the book of Acts is still Jesus' ministry through the believers by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Christ was shed abroad in every believer's heart when they received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And what you see in the book of Acts is Jesus still carrying out his calling, his ministry through the people. We are ambassadors for Christ. And he's in us so that we can reconcile the world back to him. So we need to pursue him and how he wants to fulfill his calling. So as I end this message, this is what God would say to you. And I believe he's saying this as our direction. Come to Matthew chapter 16. And this is what Jesus would say to you about allowing him to fulfill his purpose through you. Verse 24. Then Jesus went to work on his disciples. How many of you know we're his disciples? And he says to us, anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Ask Abraham. Amen. Self-sacrifice is the way. My way to finding yourself, yourself is your true purpose of why he created you, your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself, to lose out on why you were created by God for his purpose? But yet you achieved all this fame. You accomplish all these goals and you fulfilled all your dreams and you get before the Lord and he says, well, not well done because you did none of it in the purpose he gave you. So what could you ever trade your soul for? So I encourage you, God does not need your self-help to accomplish his purpose through you. What he needs is your obedience to his way and to his leadership. And when you do this, you're going to see God accomplish his purpose through you exceedingly abundantly above all your highest prayers, your highest dreams, your thoughts, and your expectation by the power of God working in you. You'll start seeing the miraculous take place and you'll start hearing God say, well done before you get to heaven. In your prayer life, you'll start hearing your daddy say, I'm so proud of you. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I see you in the earth and you bring me so much pleasure. Oh, my God. Let Jesus, let the spirit of Christ stay in your driver's seat as God reveals purpose to you in 2024. So, Father, I thank you. For all that are here under the sound of my voice and streaming online, I thank you, Father, that you're creating and energizing in them right now a longing and desire to fulfill your will, to accomplish your purpose in the earth, 
to your satisfaction, delight, and pleasure. God birthed in them that when they allow you to be in the driver's seat, that they can do all things through Christ who will infuse them with inner strength to accomplish what he has purposed for us in the earth. I thank you, Father, in their time of fasting that distractions will be removed and they'll have ears to hear you what the Spirit of the Lord is saying clearly, that your purpose will be downloaded in their hearts. And God, they will hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Come on, let's praise God. Come on, let's praise God. If you got an expectation that while you're in this time of fasting and prayer and in 2024, that you will know why God created you, that you will know his purpose. Come on, let's praise God in this house for revealing his purpose clearly to you, that you are in a position to hear it. And God says, you know, there's nothing wrong with my transmission, God wants you to know. He says, I'm speaking to you 24-7. The problem is there's something wrong with our receptors. We're so busy. We're so full of distractions. And this is why in this time of fasting, we're getting rid of these distractions. Because God is speaking. God has already revealed purpose. We just missed it because we've been busy. We've been too full of what we want to do and what we think and our own opinions and our own goals and our own dream that it drowns out the voice of God. So I encourage you, get your receptor in tune and don't lose it in 2024 and beyond. So every head bow and every eye close. And if you're online, bow your head and close your eyes. This is a time where Jesus is saying, You're going to stand before me one day. And I'm going to ask, what have you done with Jesus? The Father God's going to say, what did you do with my son? Did you receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior? He's not asking whether you went to church every Sunday or whether you served or fed the hungry or went out and worked in a nursing home. He's going to ask you, what did you do with his son? Did you receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior? Whether you answer that yes will determine you spending eternity with him in heaven. If you do not answer it yes, then by default, your eternity will be in hell. And so we don't have to have that hell eternity be part of us. This is a great time to assure your reservations and receive Jesus. So if you have not received Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior, and you're not able to tell God that you did so, then raise your hand because we're going to receive him here this morning. And raise your hand online if you want to receive him here this morning. Praise God. I'm so glad everybody in this house has received Jesus. But now, family, you're called to be ambassadors of Christ. Go out and get those that don't know Jesus and bring them in the house. Amen. Online, if you have hands up, we're going to pray for you. And all of us believers in here will join you in prayer to receive Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. I thank you for giving your life for me. I believe you rose from the grave for me. I give you my life. Come live in my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Glory to God. If you just said that prayer for the very first time, whether you're online or in this house, praise God, you have just been translated from the kingdom of hell, from the kingdom of the devil, and put into the family of God. Welcome to the family of God. All of heaven is rejoicing. And I want to rejoice with you. 
online, what we would like for you to do, let us know the great decision you made by texting our Victory Connect number. Please text hashtag VCMIDC to 22300 and a link will pop up on your mobile device. Hit that link, fill out the information and hit submit. We have a ministry team that will be in contact with you within 24 hours. We want to pray with you, walk alongside you and help you live out this new life. You're in a new way of doing things and you need help.